Today's topic is putting. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of uh, what grip to use, how to address the ball, give you a little stroke to start using, and then uh, we're going to go out to a real golf course, practice putting green, and we're going to see how we can hit some putts out there and how you should practice. There's a distinct way I feel you should practice as a beginner. I'm going to get to that, uh, but we're going to compare what it's like putting on a man cave putting green versus the real deal. So it's going to be quite exciting. So come on back and we'll get started. Okay, today we're going to start with the basic putting grip. We're going to use what they call the reverse overlap. You start off by taking the club with your left hand, just like you would in a normal fairway shot club. However, you stick the index finger out so your right hand can slide in behind it and turn over. And then you could either keep your finger like that or you can turn it in. And that's basically the reverse overlap grip, the basic grip. There's not an excessive amount of wrist break in a putt, so you should feel like your hands are working together. It's kind of important. You don't want to be too wobbly or your putts are going to go all over the place and you're going to lose consistency. But that is the basic reverse overlap grip all right that's where we start so when you're addressing the ball first of all in putting comfort is the name of the game you want to be in a comfortable position and that includes buying a putter that is the right length for you you don't want to be hunched over with a putter that's too short you don't want to be bound up with a putter that's too long you want to have your arms hang naturally the putter should be resting flat on the ground. Some putters are got a different lie and they go more like a flat lie and I like this. Some putters are upright. So you just have to go to the shop and pick out a putter that feels right for you. Some are heavier, some are lighter. I tend to have a heavier putter because I like to feel the head, but it's your choice. It's not mine. I just get up to the ball very comfortably. How far do we stand from the ball? Basically, the rule is have your eyes right over the ball. I also position the ball on the inside of my left foot, and I have about a grips uh, length stance. But you could have a wider stance. Lydia Ko actually is using a wider stance right now because we don't want the legs to move, so she's using it probably for stability. I have mine a little narrow more comfortable for me but you can't move the legs or the head the only thing that moves in your putting stroke are your hands your arms and your shoulders so one piece action to get it started i use a forward press just a tiny one and what we're trying to do we're trying to strike the ball not at the base but a little bit off the ground to give it a, an end over end rolling pattern to give it a true roll. Because as you will learn when we get on the real green today, that you want your putt to go straight, even if you're playing a break, meaning every putt is performed hitting it straight and then let it take the break naturally from the contours of the green. You don't try to, you know, manipulate spin on the ball when you're putting you try to hit every putt straight and of course that adds consistency so comfortable my eyes are over the ball my left eye is over the ball that's where i like it uh, i know you can figure out 
what is your dominant eye and what is your weak eye. But for me, having my left eye over works better. I do a little forward press to get everything working. Now, when you stroke the ball, you want to have a consistent stroke, meaning you don't want to slam it or hit it. You want to take it back so far and take it through the same length. Take it back and through, like a, a pendulum on a clock. And of course, the longer the putt, the longer the stroke. But you don't want to give it extra gas at the last minute because, again, that's going to throw your line off and the putts can go who knows where. So basically, if you're standing too far away from the ball, you may take it inside. So move it up. And if you're standing too close to the ball, there's a chance you may be taking it outside. So you got to find a happy medium. Just get comfortable. You don't grip the daylights out of the club. Keep your arms loose, your wrists relaxed. Just give it a little forward press. Find some timing. And that's it. It's nothing more complicated than that. <laughs> And putting is very complicated, let me tell you. See? As you can see, most likely from the film, my putting stroke has a uh, plane to it, which means I open the toe slightly on the way back, hit the ball square, and then close the toe coming through. That's one way to putt. Other people putt with the club going straight back and straight through. That's easier said than done. So anyway, those are the basics. And now we're going to get out to the course and see the difference between our practice area here at home and the real course out there. I do think you have a great advantage of having a practice screen at home because by the time you hit the course, you have a stroke and a strategy, and I think you're way ahead of the game if you already have a consistent stroke that you've been working on, especially all winter here for the people that live in the Northeast. So here we are, the real McCoy. Nice to get out of our uh, man cave. We we'll remember what we did down there with our stroke. We're just going to. Take a couple of foot putt and just put them right in. Nice and short, two and a half foot putt. Nothing fancy. Little forward press. Use your forward press. Now remember, if your club is going to the outside, probably standing too close to the ball. So back up a little bit. This is the same if it's going too far inside, probably standing too far away from the ball. So you got to find a happy medium. You know your grip. So just put them in. All right. It's a little different because now we have wind, we have other players, we have all kinds of distractions. But remember, the object is to just keep a constant flow. No jabbing, no hitting. Keep a constant flow and try to hit the ball, not at the base, but somewhere off the turf to get it rolling in the right direction. So next, we got a longer putt. I am not going to advise you how to hit this putt but uh, a lot of people say look at a green and see which way the rain would drain off it or the water would drain off it that's probably the way it's going to break this looks a little complicated to me so we're going to send down a uh, it's downhill we're going to send down just one putt to give us an idea where we're going i'm going to play it left edge here again nothing changes 
nice smooth roll. Ah, it's faster than I thought. And it does slightly break to the right. So now, I want you to get up there square to square. Play it a little bit more to break to the right. Add a little softer. Still no good. Play a little more extra break. And there we go. That's what I want you to do. Then I want you to get back at the ball and see if you can figure out why it's breaking to the right. And this is the tough one. We're going to look on both sides. This is the tough one. This looks like it could go either way, but we know that the water is draining down into the pond. That gives us a clue. The greens don't have too much grass on them yet. They haven't grown much. But we know that this bad boy is fast and it's going to break slightly to our right. Same stroke. Nothing changes. I didn't get enough back. All right. So there we go. The thing that you have to do is you have to get up and make sure your alignment's the same all the time. Because remember, every putt is a straight putt as far as your stroke is concerned. Every putt is a st straight putt. What do I mean by that? I have a little longer putt here. Let's see. Like a six footer. And we know it's going to break a little to the right. We don't try to guide it into the hole. We pick a spot maybe right edge, and then we hit this straight. Trying to run this ball end over end. You're not trying to spin the ball other than end over end. Right? And it's going to be fast. So we just... That was more straight than I thought. doesn't break from this angle. Thought it would break, but it's not. It's more straight. I'm just touching those. Okay. So now, how weird does this feel? Huh? Being on a real green as opposed to being in a man cave. Pretty strange, isn't it? So what have we learned so far? Well, we learned from two and a half feet, right? You got a downhill putt, it's gonna break, tendency to break to the right. But from two and a half feet, there's no grass on here to pull it. So we know it's gonna break to the right, but from two and a half feet, we're not going to slam it, but we've got to keep it inside the hole. All right, just get it rolling. Keep it inside the hole. Right. So we learned that. Now we got this. We got this eight footer. And this bad boy is going to break to the right tendency, but it's awful quick. So what I'm gonna do here, I picked out a spot right here. That's the break. I'm gonna try to dive the putt in here and let it just go to the hole. I wanna make it, but God knows I don't want a three putt it. So even on an eight footer, I'm just gonna try to die it in. Cause it's downhill and it's, it's a little creepy. Now, the good news is, if I slide it by, 
I'm gonna have an uphill putt. That's the good news. So, but we're just gonna cooch it down. We're gonna play it off. Because it's so slippery, we're gonna play it more off the toe so we don't get so solid a hit. It's gonna give us some cushion. So we're gonna play it off the toe. And we're just gonna cooch it down. And we got lucky. We made it. There's the birdie. Now, now we got a 20 footer, 25 footer. All we're trying to do on this one, all we're trying to do on this putt, trying to keep the same line. All we're trying to do on this putt is cooch it down two putt. Again, we would love to make it, but we're talking about, we're talking about a good sized putt here. Let's see what I got here. I got one, three, six, nine, twelve. That's like a 25 footer. We're in lag territory. We just want to lag this up. So we're going to pick a line. We're going to expect it to break a lot more than the other one. So we're going to play this, I would say, we're going to play this six inches outside the hole. We got a spot that we can aim at pretty close to the ball. All right. Got a spot. We're going to play it like six inches to the left edge on the pro side. The side that it breaks toward the hole, that's the pro side. The amateur side is the side that it breaks by the hole or below the hole, as they say. Amateur because you never gave it a chance to go in. Pro side is could go in at any moment if it's still on the high side. I'll explain that again later. But here we go. Now, it's going to get it's going to get really fast in here. So I'm going to try to cooch it, give it a good roll to here, and hopefully the, the rest of it will take it in. So what's that? That's three, six feet away from the hole. I'm going to want it to start dying at the hole. I'm going to want it to start dying six feet away from the hole because right at the hole is a pretty good size dip. So here we go. I'm going to play it. Because we know it's breaking right, so all we're looking for is a two putt on this one. And if it goes in, God bless. Again, six feet from the hole. I'm going to hit a good putt about six feet. I'll let the other part of it do its own work. I'm on, baby. There you go. That's a good lag putt. We two putted it. All right, let's try it again now that we know what we know. Let's see if we can come closer. Right. We got a 25 footer complete with bugs. There we go. Get out of my way, buddy. Again. The same line, and why are we practicing the same line? Because it exposes our stroke more than anything, right? We're putting all kinds of different putts all over the place. We don't know what our stroke is doing, but because it's the same putt, because it's the same line, we got a pretty good idea how our stroke is performing, just like in the basement and the man cave. Okay, I'm talking so much I lost my spot. Now there it is, and we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to give a good six foot putt because it's going to dip after that. And we're going to hit it just a touch harder and hopefully it can make the thing. I pushed it. But there it is. Another two putt. As we know, this putt already. And we two putted it. So, that's your first putting lesson. Okay, now that we've returned back to our man cave, you see the importance of practicing 
a certain way, meaning uh, when you go out willy-nilly and just start hitting putts to every hole on a green, you really don't know what your stroke is doing. But when you start with a very short putt, two and a half feet, and then you move back to a, a seven or eight foot putt, same line, and then you move to a 25 foot putt, same line, you're putting on the same line, and what does that expose? That exposes your stroke, because you see the ball, how it's reacting on that line, and how your speed is, and how your aim is. So instead of going all over and practicing to every other hole, and uh, different breaks, and different speeds, no, no, no. You still want to focus on your stroke when you practice. To me, that's the most important. And uh, most of the work is going to be done here at home. And then you see that there's many distractions. There were guys on the green. We had to be quiet. We didn't want to, you know, broadcast the whole show while they're practicing. But by using the same line and the same putt, just changing the distances, it changed how to read the putts. It changed how to stroke the putts. It's a whole different ball game. But there it is. There's the basics. And I wish you good luck. And uh, we'll probably do an advanced uh, series to uh, or episode. And uh, take it to another level before we're through. So hang in there. Subscribe to the uh, Forgotten Golfer. And have a good evening.